I noticed that one of the old capacitors I removed had a crack in it. These are commonly referred to as black beauties or bumblebee caps. They may look more modern, but what they really are is the same old type of paper foil capacitor that uh, are so prone to failure. They just put it inside of a plastic housing, so let's see if I can pop this open and show you what's inside. Never tried to restuff one of these, it seems like a ton of work, but I suppose if one can find that seam and pop it open, you could put a new cap inside this and glue it back together, but I don't think I'm ever going to go that far with these. Uh, but anyways, there there it is. There's the uh, same type of cap. So it's not like the more modern type that use plastic films that last virtually forever. I'm going to roll it a little bit. Hmm. More stubborn than I expected. Not sure what kind of plastic this is, but it's pretty tough stuff. It's a little hard to tell what material that is, but yeah, it seems like it's, it's paper. It's like wax paper in between the in between the foil there. So these do fail just about uh, as often as the uh, their counterparts that have the cardboard outer tube. I believe what happens is either the paper absorbs some moisture, starts conducting, or it's just um, degrades over time, breaks down. And these caps fail and they tend to swell and then they crack open like this one did. My parts order has arrived which included these nice vitreous enamel ohmite 10 watt 5000 ohm resistors. I've already gone ahead and installed one, two, three of them which just leaves this one little area right down in here right now I'm checking out these two guys which are rather nasty looking two dog bone resistors connected in parallel that have seen better days there's enough paint left on them that it looks like the bodies are yellow got an orange dot and the end is violet. So that would be 47k. In parallel about 23k. I'm measuring about 5. So I would suspect these got really hot and that's why the paint got singed off. So, so far I've seen a few points of failure. This original power resistor was open these are fried and much lower in value than they should be and possibly this is a problem it's a nice chomp taken out of that ceramic disc well two effects that could have uh, alter the capacitance a bit uh, but also moisture could get in there and maybe cause some leakage so I'll be replacing that Okay, I guess I'm finally done with working underneath the chassis, at least for now. Next up, I'm going to flip this down and see about wiring in that replacement yoke. So, here is the yoke that I propose using. Now, one of my astute viewers noticed that it has Y17 stamped on the side and it just so happens that if you look up the part number from the K part in a Thordarson 
yoke replacement guide Y17 is their replacement. So I'm even more uh, enthusiastic about this yoke actually working. Also, I popped the cover off of it and notice there are two caps inside. They just happen to be 56 and 270 picofarad, just like it is shown on the schematic. Okay, so what do I need to do? Well, aside from physically mounting it, I've got to wire this thing in. Now, this one's got a plug on the end. I need to cut that off and figure out the four wires. What do they go to? And notice there's also a loop coming out that seems to feed back into it. Uh, off the top of my head, I would guess that that fifth wire that loops back is the center point between the vertical or horizontal windings and uh, they don't need it for this configuration but maybe there are other sets that might need it and you could cut this and wire it in I don't know alright so get the plug off and figure out which four wires are with horizontal and vertical and then I gotta figure out where they connect now some like this fairly obvious I think is I believe is the 56 picofarad cap. Hopefully there's still a marking on it. In which case, well that should wire in down to the appropriate cap in here. Same goes for this. This was going to the 270 directly. So I would guess that's got to be this wire, right? Because it's the only one that attaches right to the 270. And if the other one is the 56, which I'm guessing it's got to be, that must be this wire. And then, if I do a continuity check, I can figure out uh, which are the other two. Or, uh, well, no, I can't do continuity check because the yoke isn't attached. I forgot I said that. Uh, so I need to figure out the other two wires, these two. One's green, so... Okay, that might probably be that guy. Which would mean the other one that's left is ground. Okay, so both of those cap wires with caps those are both the uh, horizontal windings. Which is a little confusing because the way they show us on the schematic is that these are the vertical coils and they have them in the horizontal plane and vice versa. If they rotate this 90 degrees, it might make a little more sense. Anyways, so these two are the vertical. And the two with the caps hanging off of them are the horizontal. Alright. That was pretty easy to figure out. Should probably replace the wiring at some point because it's all crap and stuff. But I think it's good enough to uh, do a little test. So I'll clip these off, trace out the wiring, and just temporarily splice the stuff in. Wrap some electrical tape around it and get this thing mounted back up. And then I am going to rig up... A speaker with an RCA jack. I'm going to plug in here for sound. And, uh, oh, I'll uh, dig out a little test CRT. I've got some up there. I, what I need is the one that's in that box. That is an 8XP4. That uh, is a good substitute for the early rectangular pitcher tubes. Do not want to use a full size pitcher tube while working. Uh, on this chassis on the, on the workbench. Okay, I got the yoke wired in as best I could figure. Got my little test CRT. It's at a bit of an angle here because this high voltage lead has a spring on it that uh, doesn't allow it to bend that much. And I've got a little test speaker rigged up. So, without further ado, I'll do the lights off so I can see if anything flashes over or arcs. I turn it on. Well, 5U4 did have a bit of a gl blue glow that like traveled down the plates. But I've kind of seen that before on sets. Uh, when they first turn on. Does this really mean there's anything wrong? As soon as the plates don't, uh, they're glowing red, I think it's alright. 
Remember this side has a fuse and so does my uh, variac. Faint crackle out of the speaker. I mean, it's definitely sunk out of the speaker. Nothing on the CRT, but uh, there also might be an issue with uh, the electromagnetic field coil or focus coil on the neck. See, I'm not sure. Just curious. Turn this control down here and I suddenly got static when I go to the extremer, but that's the AGC control. Well, I thought that was in the back of the set. Alright, well, that's a very good sign. Tuner's doing something. There it is. All right. That's what no antenna. Twenty-five cents per mile overall. Incentives applied. Plus license, title, tax, and dock. Just stuck my finger on the antenna terminal. All right. So tuner's working. The IF's working because this picks off the sound uh, from the video amp, or just right. Before, yeah, I think right after the detector. So tuner's working and the IF is working. No, there's no CRT glow, but might just be. Uh, an issue with this tough CRT, so first I'm going to use my high voltage probe and see if we have any high voltage. Okay, let's see if uh, I've got any high voltage. something but no nah, it doesn't look like we got any high voltage okay well so well it doesn't mean there's an issue with the flyback I'll uh, turn the set around and poke around back there check drive control now I have not checked any of the controls on this set and uh, for sure some of them might be bad uh, like the focus control or the drive control I think I just identified one potential source of problem. There's a quarter amp fuse inside the high voltage cage. Can't remember if I checked it before or not, but now it sure appears to be open. So I'm going to dig up a quarter amp fuse and put it in there and see if it makes a difference. I just tacked in a pigtail fuse across the existing burned out one and let's give this another try oh yeah we got a raster See that glow from here with the lights turned off. The camera's picking that up. Alright. 
And I notice as far as I don't want the tube isn't glowing blue anymore. Just did briefly as the set was powering up. <laughs> Out of focus, uh, uncentered mess, but there is a raster. All right. Huh. Actually, a video too. It's just uh, a sink. Not very bright either. To keep the lights off. Sure that is. Okay, yeah, that's a vertical hold. So it's out of hold there. Now it seems to lock, so we're doing a horizontal hold. Oh, that's better. I might be brightness. No, this is probably brightness. The other one's contrast. Okay, bit by bit. Here's the control before when I turn that. It's on max. If I if I back it off, it seems to really kill the game. Of course, none of these controls are labeled. That's why I'm not quite sure what's what. And there are some controls on the back. I might have to manipulate those. I think all I got to do is get uh, horizontal holes. Lock. Oh, but the, oh, this could be foot. Wow. No point in speculating what the controls are. I'll just have to look them up. Getting awfully close. Manipulating the horizontal drive control in the back got me a brighter picture and increased the width. It's backed off now, it's bumped up. And uh, as far as the hole goes, there's a coil on the back. I'm going to try adjusting that. Very similar to the uh, Admiral 20X1, Y1, Z1 series. Kind of tool I need there. Okay, it seems like you actually use a uh, quarter inch hex nut driver to adjust that coil. So. Crap, but that is a stable image. I don't know if the CRT is not exactly pushed into the yoke right or anything, but you can make that out. 87.7 FM, which is what our low power channel 6 is. The sink is still off, a little on the vertical maybe. Controls does what and fiddle around with them more, but it's awesome first power, especially considering all the work I had to do with this thing. And I, I say that pun not intended. It's not, it's, it's, and I haven't checked any of the tubes yet. I mentioned that. Right. All right, well, it's getting pretty late, so I'm going to call it quits for now. And uh, I think the next thing I will do is test the tubes.